Oh, hi there. It's um, Dr. Rich McLean, who died, was revived, and now it's Baron Dodger. It's um, a little bit of a rehearsal because it's a lot of pressure to do these videos, but I'm here to make a statement um, which will protect me and finally provide me some justice. Um, um, it is my perspective that I've become a targeted individual of the Australian government and I've been earmarked for destruction. Um, this is easily demonstrated um, over my life because I've um, been financially redacted intelligently every bit of prosperity that was ever meant for me. And um, this has been conscious, malicious, and it's been enacted by um, corrupt lawyers and public officials um, who actually are corrupt. And that's what I'm doing today, calling out the corruption, and it goes right up to the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet and the Prime Minister himself. Um, so uh, the corruption is profound, it's systemic, and it's gone through um, every government agency, including the Prime Minister's office. Now, I've written a letter to the Prime Minister about um, the corruption and my situation in which I'm unnecessarily um, victimised, my human rights have been abused, my legal rights have been obliterated, and um, I've suffered incredibly as a result, including um, actually attempting suicide to escape um, this vilification, victimization, oppression, my human rights abuses, and for being intentionally isolated systemically and politically and socially from other people and organisations and help. Um, now, that evidence of the Prime Minister's letter is on this website and his response is on this website. And this website operates as an insurance policy in order for me to be able to avoid jail, avoid being incarcerated as a crazy person, and to avoid um, systemic and profound neglect, which has a aim, and that aim is to cause me harm and even kill me. The, um, the, um, it's on the public record that I've already survived suicide. That could be identified as a murder. Now, I've, it's been three years since I was revived from certain death and the freedom of information documents say that it was a fatal injury and a lethal attempt. And now there's a cover up at the hospital and all agencies and I've never received compensation for the perceived and actual cognitive brain impairment that affects my memory. And this is another injustice. This oppression of mine has been going for so long um, and everyone's on board. Um, is, has been abhorrent, it's been a real struggle for me and it's been, um, it's tested everything, that every skerrick of um, survival that I have in me. I've just um, lived for, for a whole month as a homeless person, as a um, vagrant, an infamous vagrant, on the run from police who are um, trying to incarcerate me with the Mental Health Act and this is one of the reasons um, and ways that they're going to silence me. The other way they're going to silence me is to frame me with crimes I've either admitted to or um, they're going to frame me with and in order to jail me. And that is another way they can silence me. The third way they can silence me is, and which they've done over a long time, systemically and politically, is to character assassinate me and destroy everything about me, destroy my voice, my person, my finances, my prosperity, take everything that I have, and everything that I had to rebuild myself up, such as my business, my website, and other things they intentionally pruned and destroyed, deleted or took out of my life. And the problem um, is that um, no one's being upfront with me and everyone's being deceitful, lying and finding intelligent reasons to make the actions they do without acknowledging um, the true facts of the situation. What is true and what is a fact I've published on this website below, and that includes that I've literally died and then been revived and there's been a cover up. The other bit of evidence is that um, the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet and the Prime Minister himself are absolutely consciously aware of my abuse over very many years. I've published a letter below and he's refused to meaningfully intervene in the political persecution of me 
and my financial situation, which was squatting as a vagrant with no rights and no legal rights. Now, the Prime Minister's office has sent me to um, uh, Mark Dreyfus's office, the Attorney General, who's refused to um, listen to my um, emails and my phone calls. And um, his office, which has delegitimized and de-identified him as a person, has then sent me to AGIS, who investigates ASIO, um, for the corrupt um, conduct of my former partner, Steve Isonides, who exploited me and owes me a fair, just and equal settlement. But um, AGIS have already aware of the situation and they've refused to investigate Steve. The other thing the Attorney General's department did was to direct me to the, the Commonwealth Ombudsman. And this is another example of the corruption. Um, I am a failed whistleblower at the Ombudsman and they've refused all future correspondence. That locks me out of any justice and any attempt at justice because I'm literally blacklisted as a democratic free citizen <coughs> of this country. And that's unethical, it's unjust, it's unfair, and it victimizes me. And it um, is part of what this is. It's called a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And it's systemic, it's brutal, it has ill intentions to cause malicious harm to me, it victimizes me, it oppresses me, my human rights have been obliterated, and my legal rights are absolutely nowhere to be found. I'm 50 years old, and I've never, ever had a lawyer. So, the Prime Minister, he's been ineffective at making um, a meaningful change to the conditions that, of, of my life, which is a brutal victimization and a persecution. And in doing so, he's committed to his stance that he elongates my suffering, he puts my life at an existential risk, and um, he's refused to intervene, and therefore identifying himself as part of the conspiracy to pervert the cause of justice. And just to demonstrate this with absolute clarity, I've now been rejected at the Australian uh, Federal Anti-Corruption Crime Commission, or the, um, the, the Anti-Corruption Commission, who have unanimously rejected me, and um, I'm a free democratic citizen of this country, and I deserve to have my voice heard. But the problem for me is everyone in government and every single government agency and every single public official has been pre-warned, predetermined, set up to not acknowledge me, to delegitimize my story, to not acknowledge my evidence, and to act in a way which is deceitful, illegal, unjust, unfair, and which um, has an aim to never give me justice, never acknowledge my issues, and um, it aims to financially destroy me. And I, it's Christmas Day, I'm alone. I haven't got anyone here apart from my support worker who's helping me make these videos. I don't have any family, I don't have any friends, I don't have any money, I don't have any agency to make money, and um, I've been absolutely categorically character assassinated and brutally destroyed. And this is a really unfair treatment for someone who spent their whole life as a person sticking up for people who are marginalised and their carers. And I've got to say, the level of betrayal from the Australian society, institutions, organisations, um, educational places and places that I used my altruism to help and assist, which was revered and celebrated at some point, and they've all turned their back on me, is palpable. I'm here with my dog. Dog spelled backwards is God, and she's my um, right-hand woman. And we're making these statements today in order that um, I be protected from jail, I be protected from um, incarceration in an insane asylum, and furthermore, that I finally make a statement which is coherent, which is intelligent, which provides the evidence necessary to prove what it is, a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, and I have no choice but to do this. It is my moral obligation as a citizen of the country to call out corruption when it occurs. Um, and I am a failed whistleblower at a lot of government agencies. Um, and this is in spite of the fact that I'm well within um, the confines of having the qualities of a person who can make a public interest disclosure. And that means that all my public interest disclosures have been set up to fail, they're illegal, 
and they haven't acknowledged me as a fair, equitable citizen of the country or um, legitimised my evidence. Now, I'm just going to make a few statements because I'm going to introduce some headings. This is the main one at the top. Um, this is about the Prime Minister and um, there's going to be a statement on whistleblowing on Steve Isonides, my former partner, the ASIO agent, of which no government agency will admit the relationship ever existed. There's going to be one on lawyers and legal help. There's going to be one on um, work cover. And there's going to be one on, um, I can't see. Um, uh, I can't see that. I haven't got my glasses. Anyway, jump on board. You're going to hear some pretty wild accusations and you're going to see some pretty profound evidence. And this evidence is not able to be delegitimized or unappreciated or um, not accepted anymore because I'm making this a public document and I'm publishing it. It's Christmas Day. I'm by myself. I'm absolutely alone. I've got nothing and no one. Merry Christmas. We're going to win.